Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to another Fishing Ford Radio Last Cast presented by Tackle Webs. We hope that uh, we hope to do more live episodes like this. This is our first time, and we're very excited. You know, we usually do a live radio show on Saturday mornings. This is a little bit different, but we're really excited to have our first guest on. He has been literally running around all week with his head cut off. Why? Yeah. He and his partners are aiming to start the new National Professional Fishing League here in 2021. The new trail is going to field 125 great anglers competing for $50,000 or more at each event, and they have a six-event schedule and a championship. He's the majority owner, and we couldn't be happier to welcome him. So Fishing for the Radio welcomes from Elite Angler, Al McCullough. Good morning, and thank you for your time, Al. Good morning to you, Steve, and uh, all those folks out there listening to your uh, podcast and live feed. So before I, normally when we do interviews on the radio show, I, I always like to, to find out a little bit about the person. So uh, how did you how did you get introduced into, into the outdoors, into fishing? Well, like the majority of folks, uh, with your dad, um, he taking my brother and I out. Uh, we're from the St. Louis area. We went out to bush wildlife a lot, did a lot of bank fishing. Um, they had numerous ponds out there, and it was a... It was a uh, conservation park that uh, August Bush put together years ago uh, to the St. Louis community. So my dad got me hooked up, no pun intended, on fishing there with the old Zebco rod. We had a lot of parks around the neighborhood, and then we would take uh, trips down to, you know, Lake of the Ozarks, Bull Shoals, Table Rock, Bennett Springs, uh, from bass nice. fishing to crappie fishing to trout fishing, uh, opening season um, with the uncles, dad, brother. Um, so it was just kind of a thing. We did a lot of camping of uh, all the uh, uncles and my dad. We bought uh, They bought StarCraft pop-up campers, and we'd hit the road in spring, summer, and fall and have a good old time. You, those, uh, you just had to make sure those things were level when you had the kids on one bed and the, and the yeah. parents on the other bed, so it didn't tilt. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you've been running around. I mean, I, I saw you, you last night when we texted. You were on a, getting on a plane. This You guys started this new f- – you, well, it just you just announced it on Monday. This new National Professional Fishing League. How did how did that come about with you and your other partners that are that are with you? Okay, so I got into the uh, the optics and logistics and the tournament side through the Terrell family. Uh, okay. They run they run Anglers in Action Team Tournament Trail here in the Midwest. Uh, they run about eighteen events, and they their big event is the Big Bass Bash which they've got two at Lake of the Ozarks, one at Grand Lake and one at Pickwick. Um, so I got my, I cut my teeth there with uh, Randy Terrell, the founder and tournament director, and his son and daughter, Charlie and Marie, they're also owners of the business. So they brought me on board about 15 years ago. My first job at the Big Bass Bash was basically handing weigh-in bags to anglers. Yeah. Uh, just kind of, you know, starting at the bottom rung, so to speak. They said, hey, go out there, work hard, and then uh, it's morphed into basically being the MC for the events, being the uh, weigh-in master on stage, kind of like a Chris Jones or a Dave Mercer, uh, and that's where I am today. But uh, I definitely, all, all of my insights and knowledge as far as running a tournament trail from uh, Randy, Charlie, and Marie. Were, were you ever, have you ever been on the other side of it and fished any of those tournaments? Have you ever tried out in any opens or anything like that? You know, I fished uh, some local Wildcats and Derbies with okay. uh, friends and partners and everything. But as far as the BFLs or Costas or anything up in the top leagues, no, I haven't done any of that stuff. Uh, I just never really had time nor the money to do it. Um, I know where my talent is and I know where my zone is. My zone is on the side, optically and logistically, to put together a tournament trail for anglers that from the time they check in to the time they get their check, it runs as smoothly as possible. You're going to have some hurdles and some bumps in between, but through my 15 years of working with the Terrell family, um, you couldn't ask for a better you know, mentors to doing that on the on the side as far as tournament director or uh, owning a uh, professional fishing trail so so when you st- when uh, when of course monday this this news comes out and it just 
you know, everything. Uh, last week it was all major league, or last couple weeks it's been all major league fishing, FLW, that acquisition. When Correct. you saw that acquisition, I think I read someplace that you said we need, th- you, you had it in your mind to make this trail year, some time ago. But it never came to fruition until this acquisition with Major League Fishing and FLW. What happened during that transition that made you go, "We need to to get a re- an angler oriented and angler centric uh, tournament going"? What how, what happened there? How did how did that happen? So basically, what three years ago I wrote up a business plan for the Midwest market to have a team trail or a solo trail that was a little bit more higher entry and more payback volume. Okay. Um, most of the trails around here, whether it's a solo or whether it's a team trail is about a $200 entry fee. You're looking anywhere from a 3000 to $5,000 payback. So I said, you know what, what if we went to a thousand dollar entry fee and we did a 10,000 or $20,000 payback? Um, I shelved that. I got too busy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then when you started hearing the rumors about Major League Fishing purchasing FLW about five weeks ago, and like I said, a lot of contacts in the industry going to various elite events, FLW. So you've, I've, I've got a good Rolodex of contacts as far as vendors, anglers, etc. I dusted off that business plan and said, you know what? <clears throat> the initial rumors on this thing was three days of limits, three days of MLF format yeah. for these guys coming from the FLW tour. So I said, hey, here's an opportunity to put together another option for these guys or a choice for them that best fits, you know, their family, their business or their job. You know, to me, everything that comes down with the the, the pro fishing, uh, it's two things. Um, It's fan involvement. Okay. Where your sponsors are going to get a return on their investment Mm -hmm. and it's big limits. You know, I know that these guys go to some of these fisheries and, and you hear it all the time and stuff. And it really, you know, I, I'm perplexed by it. You know, if you go to a fishery and you're fishing for 50000 or $20,000 and the winning weight is 15 pounds or 13 pounds, yeah. you know, you're still getting paid $20,000, $50,000. It doesn't necessarily always have to be a 20, 25-pound bag. But I understand the excitement behind it. Everybody mm-hmm. likes to see those five and six and eight pounders. So for me, as far as the upper echelon or the top tier of professional bass fishing, Those fans, those anglers, they want to see big fish, big limits. They want to come up on stage. They want to snap them out of that weigh-in bag. They want to show them off there, and you want to live stream it. Bass does a great job of it. FLW Tour does. Major League Fishing is a great format, the conservation aspect and all that stuff. We just felt uh, with the ownership group, uh, Brad and Michelle Fuller of Omega Custom Tackle, along with Paul Benson of Cash and Rods, that, hey, here's an opportunity for 125 guys that maybe have qualified but haven't gotten the invite to the elites or the FLW Tour or the FLW Pro Circuit or Major League Fishing, for them to come out and show their skills off to the fans out there and to show off to their sponsors. And that's one reason that I was adamant about when we do these events starting in 2021, this is going to be a trailer way in event. If you've ever been to a classic, you see that boat and truck come rolling in there. The mm-hmm. excitement is there. That angler sitting in that boat brings out those fish in that bag, walks across the bridge, up on the stage. Dave Mercer hits it up there, and the fans get excited. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to do as far as our weigh-in process goes. And I think that's really going to give, you know, whether it's folks that are already in the industry as sponsors or people outside the industry that want to get into an $800 billion market as far as the outdoor world goes, now they've got another choice, and so do the anglers that are sitting on the sidelines that are great coaster or BFL guys. So, when did you, when this acquisition happened, and you know we all have all these friends in the industry? Did you? I don't want to, you don't have to tell me specific names by any means, but did you talk to any anglers and and get their opinion on what's happening, and then say, hey, look, this is this is what we plan to do in twenty twenty one. Does that yeah, make sense? Absolutely. Um, my first thing was, you know, I went to my my phone list and I the started, friends. you know, friends and started calling up these anglers on all the tours. Yeah. Guys that have been out there for 10 years, 15 years, guys that have been in the middle of their career, five or six, and guys that are basically rookies or in their second year. And I said, look, this is what I'm putting together. This is what I have on paper and stuff. And, and when that process started, 
you got to remember that the format for the FLW Pro Circuit, which they call it now, that was three days of limits, three days of, of, of MLF style. So guys were kind of in between what they were going to do. And I said, look, if I put this together, do you have an interest? I said, these are kind of the bullet points. Um, I had about 91 guys uh, in the professional level sign NDAs. Um, I also looked at Costa guys, BFL guys. And I went through a four-week process where I probably averaged about four hours of sleep per mm-hmm. night. And I just threw out scenarios. Hey, here's 10 different pay periods that we can have for an event. Which one do you guys want to vote on? Do you guys rather do a tub and bag weigh-in or a trailer event weigh-in? As far as uh, us doing a national professional league, we're going to go out west. So I took into account what the anglers were feeding back to me. And everything you see on that press release, I might have laid out at the beginning, but there was a lot of cut and paste and copying, erasing, you name it. I mean, good gracious, I need about... 20 more erasers by the time I finally got to this, along with Brad, Michelle, and Paul, my partners, all going through all of this and doing our due diligence saying, okay, here it is right now. I will tell you this, and this is, you know, for the, you know, a lot of people out there as far as the feedback goes, oh, you know, it's $30,000. This is not a working man's uh, professional fishing league, et cetera, et cetera. Here's what I want to define on that as a working man. Look, we could do a $2,500 fishing league and stuff, but the payouts are going to go down. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we're doing 80-20, and then if you really factor it all in, we're doing 85-15 because we're taking those entry fees and putting $250,000 towards the championship for the top 25 that qualify by five, five points. So the guy that 25th is going to make five grand at the top is going to make 50 grand. But we went through this and said, look, um, we want to know what the anglers want and is best for them. When we do this, we're going to go out west. You know, we're mm-hmm. going to look at the Clear Lakes, the Shastas, the Havasus, the Meads. This is a national tournament. And I think the way that we're going to set up this scheduling with two in the spring, two in the summer, two in the fall, yes, I know it's difficult for people that have a job or own a business that want to have dreams of uh, fishing professionally against big sticks and big money. But I think spreading that out and not being so top heavy in the spring mm-hmm. will help them to schedule. OK, and uh, I got all this feedback uh, from the anglers and bam, that's what we put out there on Monday. So do you expect do you expect some of the elite and major league fishing and FLW pro guys to possibly join the new what? Well, what did it's the N and the national PFL? Yeah. Yeah, NPFL. I'm not league. a big acronym guy. I used to, you know, I'm okay. in trucking. There's acronyms for acronyms. But the National <laughs> Professional Fishing League or the National PFL, trust me, we will have it short when it comes to emails. Yeah. I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> They'll be like, what are you doing, my man? <laughs> um, you know, th- that's always the possibility. That's not the goal of this. I'll tell you what the goal of this was. Huge respect for all those guys on the elite side. Huge respect yeah. for the uh, MLF guys, Bass Pro Tour. FLW Pro Circuit, you know, from everybody that runs those events, those organizations and the angles. There's a lot of guys on the outside looking in that are hammers that people don't know about. Mm-hmm. From the Coasters, from the BFL All-Americans, from the collegiate level. I yeah. mean, look at what college bass, look at what bass and Cabela's has done for collegiate bass fishing. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, there's only so many spots in those organizations right now. Okay, so we're starting this off at 125. You know, I talked to a lot of these anglers. They've got a choice. Um, it's going to come down to scheduling whether these guys on the elite side or FLW Pro Circuit can do that. But that's really not my biggest concern. My biggest concern, number one, is scheduling around bass open events because I don't want to take away that opportunity for those individuals that fish my circuit to not have a chance to go win a classic. That would yeah. just be it. They're taking money. You're taking yep. food off the table. And, look, let's be honest. The classic is – the granddaddy the of all. It's the Rose Bowl. Yep. I know we're not there. We're going to get there. And, you know, we're going to push, and competition is good for everybody in the market, okay, for sponsors and anglers and the families and all that stuff. But as far as things go like that, um, I'm looking at a lot of guys that are on the outside looking in, and we're accepting resumes right now on our email addresses up until the end of November. Now, the biggest hurdle that we're going to have to do, we might have a stack this hot. We're yeah. going to have to go through all of us. 
and we're going to be transparent as possible. We're going to put out, you know, kind of some benchmarks of how we're making these choices because we want to be honest with these individuals. Um, sometimes I think in the industry, they get 70% of the story. Yeah. And a lot of it is held back. And I can understand people's business decision on that. For us, though, we want to do this. We're giving them an opportunity to have a platform for three years so they can go sell their uh, sponsors to say, look, live streaming is what it's all about. You can go so talking about live streaming, do you have an, uh, an, an idea on how many cameras and, and camera boats you are planning to have? And have you, is it going to be something that you have on an app or is it going to be on social media or a website? I want 900 cameras. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> no, so here's the, here, the logistics of that we're working through, but we understand the importance of it. Our investment uh, is very heavy into the optics of this um, trail. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about from the launch uh, to on-boat camera to the way in. Yeah. You've got to have this thing really pop. We want it to be, you know, we want it to be a combination of Metallica and Jimi Hendrix. When these people come out and watch these anglers pop on there, we want we want a lot of lights. We want a lot of noise. We want excitement. Um so as far as the camera stuff goes, we're working with three media companies that are putting bids together for us and some great people inside the industry currently and some ones outside the industry. Because what I think is important there is we're kind of accustomed to the same view. We're kind of accustomed to that same back view, no 360 views, nothing at a different angle. We get some great drone coverage and stuff like that. I'm not saying that helicopters and EC2s and all that stuff are in the budget, <laughs> but we want to bring something that's a little bit different because everybody, when it comes down to watching bass fishing, whether it's a weigh in or it's on the water, it's all on a laptop, a PC, an iPad yeah. or a phone, nothing against TV. We will always entertain everything, but the live streaming perfect example right now, 2021 in March, we're going to have two events plus our championship. A lot of guys are going to be in deer stands. You know, it can get pretty boring. We'll have a, a format where they can sit up there. Hopefully, they'll bring a couple extra batteries for their smartphones. But we're going to show that in the fall time, and that's going to give us huge exposure. So as far as that goes, I will tell you this. We're not cutting any corners when it comes to live streaming because we understand how important that is, especially for the sponsors. When you talk about them uh, pulling up to the weigh-in stage, from the bumper to their prop, all the logos will be up there for 60 to 90 seconds. And that's good cachet and return on investment for the uh, sponsors. Have you been talking to any major sponsors to get them involved? And what has been their response to what, what you're putting out there for them? So, yeah, I've had some initial talks with some, uh, some big time sponsors and some smaller sponsors and, and some in between. I'm still fairly new as far as the sponsor engagement, simply mm -hmm. because my biggest concern was to get this thing out there as far as a press release, get a good foundation, and then build from there. Look, we've got basically 16 months before we wet a line in March of 2021, okay? But the, the, the reception as far as that going out there to the sponsors, hey, we'll take a look at it, and wow, we've got another option. You know, not to take any – look, there's a lot of people on the outside as far as uh, brands, products, and companies – that really don't have an, uh, an understanding of the bass fishing world and how huge it is. Yes. I mean, high school teams, college, BFLs, Costas, and then the top tiers with bass and MLF and FLW Pro Circuit. So there's a lot of people whose brands cross over. You know, let's, let's take an example, and here's out for my competition out there. You know, take an Alamo or a Hertz. You yeah. can't tell me that a lot of those anglers out there, when they go on vacation, they don't rent a truck, van, or car for their family. Goodness mm -hmm. gracious. You imagine putting that placard up there. So all you people at Bass and FLW, I gave you a sponsor to call. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Uh, <laughs> because because really, it, it, this the success of your this National Professional Fishing League really is going to depend on the sponsors that you have, making sure all this comes together somewhat seamlessly because i imagine you're gonna have like even for for our radio show we've been doing this for 14 years 
doing this live stuff like this right now is a completely new way of doing things for us. But it it is something that you know you have to pr kind of practice. You're gonna have to do you're gonna have to do almost complete simulation of how they come on stage, how you talk about it, how long they talk about it, all that stuff. How how do you get how are you gonna get people to come out like like uh, like Bass does? Like one of the things I've been very vocal and I've been saying all year. No offense to Major League Fishing, they don't get anybody to show up to the the weigh-ins because you know what the you know what has happened already. Bass is overwhelming with the amount of people. FLW not as much. How do you guys separate yourself and try to attract those those fans to come in and see your anglers participate and see how they do when the tournaments start going? Well, I could tell you but I'd have to kill you. It's classified. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well. Here, here's the deal. I've got a lot of good ideas that I've written down um, over the years as far as how do you incentivize the fan to participate in the event. Yes. So here's the deal. The way that our events will be set up, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday practice. Wednesday is media and meeting day. Thursday, Friday, Saturday is the tournament day. Okay. Thursday and Friday is going to be a little bit difficult for those people because they're working. You know, you come in, you first fly at 3 o'clock. To get somebody to get off and come in there on a Thursday or Friday, Friday maybe a little bit more. Saturday, the involvement as far as participation with the fans is going to be a lot greater, okay? But there's two two factors of this. Um, the live streaming portion of it, um, as far as people watching, clicks, uh, comments, etc., that's going to be a huge um, uh, part for us as far as showing data to these sponsors so they'll invest with us. Even though they might not be those fans on site, mm -hmm. they are still there watching the event, and those sponsors are getting, um, you know, a return as far as exposure goes. As far as getting individuals to come to the event at a weigh-in, say we do an event at Lake of the Ozarks, um, and we're off site, I've got a lot of different scenarios as far as incentivizing. How do we get the turnstiles moving? You know, I've got a goal. I want 500 people there minimum on Saturday, which I think is very doable Without um, uh, for, for people to come out. I want them to bring their kids out to see these great anglers, look at these, <clears throat> you know, different anglers and the fish that they bring in at these great fisheries. You know, we're going to do things to where it's uh, fishing, but we'll have, you know, different uh, things that will be there for the kids to enjoy. You know, maybe how to, how to pitch, um, how to cast, um, you know, just different things where we make this a huge, I wouldn't say, uh, I've been doing a lot of reading on Barnum and Bailey and he was a great, great, uh, entrepreneur as far as drawing in the spectator. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be incentivizing them as far as, you know, whether it's giveaways, whether it's, um, you know, a contest to where, you know, Hey, you come in there and there's an opportunity to maybe if, if uh, an Oklahoma angler is there that maybe they can go out half day fishing with them, et cetera, et cetera. But we've got a lot of plans because we understand the importance of those people in seats uh, at the events as far as the weigh-in goes. But like I said, there's a lot of things on the books, and we're going to throw everything against the wall, and we're going to see what works. Some of it will, and some of it won't. You talked briefly about the media. You're going to have a day for like a – are you going to have – like one of the great things about Bass, uh, Bass puts on at the Classic uh, a media day where it's just a lunch where the media come out there and they get to see the anglers and talk to the anglers. Have you thought about doing something like that so that the media can come in when you're – hopefully you come down to Florida, ho hopefully. We'll um, be there. We'll okay, be there. I, I, I'm there to cover it for sure. But I would uh, – are you going to have it so we are we have an, an opportunity to, to talk to the anglers before the fishing tournament? And then at the same time, um, are you going to allow media on the boats with the anglers during the tournament? Is that an option you've looked at? So – to answer your first question, the media is going to have complete access on that Wednesday, awesome. which is media and media. Look, we understand the partnership, uh, guys like yourself um, and, you know, the various other media outlets, whether it's print, uh, whether it's uh, social media, et cetera. So absolutely, you guys are going to have a seat at the table there. You know, we're not going to sit there and say you in, you out. If you want to come down and cover it and grow your show or grow your print, Absolutely. We'd love to have you there. We'll be drawing up uh, a list of, I'd say, how the logistics of it's going to work. You know, some guys might be able to get down there on a Sunday or a Monday and kind of, you know, cover a little of the practice time. 
Some guys, as far as their schedule goes, maybe can only come down from Wednesday to Saturday or whatever. But one thing that we've done with the anglers, and in fact, is going to them and getting their input. Hey, I'm going to sit down with you guys. Come on, throw ideas out. What's going to make it logistically work best and fluid for you guys? Because, yeah, you've got time and all that stuff, but you also got to get back and you got to write the article or you got to do your podcast and everything. So we're going to get input from you guys that are interested in covering the events. Like I said, we'll be down at Florida. As far as the boat, ideal way for us as far as um, the coverage on the boats and we're working with the different media groups, you know, the ultimate goal, what we're going to strive for is a 125 marshals to be on those boats with all the anglers. We're working with Garmin, uh, our GoPro, um, Apple, and stuff like that as far as so we can get some of that live footage on some of the other boats that we don't have the cameras on there. But look, Bass last year and FLW, they had problems getting marshals to fill up those spaces to charging $200. Yes. We're not going to go that route. OK, this is going to be on a volunteer basis. We're going to give them some swag. We're going to incentivize these marshals to come out with these anglers because uh, we want to keep the integrity. Plus, we also want that live streaming video out there. But we're look, working with the media companies. They're going to give us the best ideas they think as far as how to cover this on the water. As far as the launch, the media day and the weigh in, it's not easy, but it's a lot easier than being out on that water. Plus the roaming camera boats and et cetera like that. But as far as the media guys go and access to the anglers, uh, we'll be going over with the anglers. Hey, you need to make yourself available from this time to this time uh, on that Wednesday. Uh, and we'll run it through and make it as painless as possible for both parties, not only the angler, but also for guys like yourself. That, that I love to hear. That I love to hear. Uh, do you think that you're going to be able to field 125 right now? I know the other day I saw something that said you had already had – a bunch of applications, like way more than you ever anticipated after a day. Do you think 125 is going to be easy to fill or is it going to be tough? So I will tell you this. Our, when I started this process four weeks ago, um, the feedback from guys that I had contacted on the coastal level, on the BFL level, guys on uh, Triple T, Alabama Bass Trail, whatever it might be, the upper echelon, kind of triple a of baseball mm -hmm. uh and then on the pro circuits uh i had 90 91 nda signed in mm -hmm. two weeks okay? that's awesome so as far as answering your question um yeah it's still going to be hard you know yeah. i'm not going to take it for granted we're going to be taking these resumes and they've been pouring in and like i said the difficult part but we're going to be transparent about it is who's the 125 Mm -hmm. Who's who gets the invite? Look, I'm, we're, we're not going to make everybody happy. I know there's going to be a lot of griping and all that stuff. But here's the beautiful thing about it. We're going to work through this. Those 125 guys are going to have a two year contract with an option of a third. And the benefit for both the angler and the organization is, number one, we can market these guys personalities, their brands, etc. The angler can go to the sponsors and the people that finance their dreams and say, look, I've got a three year contract and a platform where I'm going to be fishing six events and a qualify for a championship, you know where your money and your live stream and exposure is going to be at. Um, I'm not going to say it's a drop in the bucket on filling the 125, but I'm, I'm very confident based on the three weeks, four weeks of signing the NDAs, and then what I've seen come in in the last three days as far as email resumes. Mm -hmm. We've got to go back and we've got to uh, – as, as good old Ronald Reagan would say, we got to trust, but we got to verify. We got to make sure that those contracts are what is on there as far as all doing the research. And that's the beauty of the internet. We can go through and we can find out those results, BFL results, Triple T, Alabama, yeah. Bath, et cetera. So and we got a lot of good sticks and anglers in action team tournament trail, too. We'll be looking at those guys, too. We got some oh, cameras yeah. in those are. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, one of the good things about the live feeds and the live streaming and uh, there's always been for major league fishing there's a score tracker for the bass elites there is the bass track is there any possibilities or have you looked into doing that since the marshals are there already hopefully marking down what they think the guesstimates of the weights are is there going to be something like that 
that we'll be able to see as the tournament is running? Yes, there will be a live leaderboard. Um, and these things will be streamed into our server. Uh, a couple of the media companies that we're talking to. Abilities. You got me? Yeah, I got you. Um, so to go back, yes, yeah, there'll be a live leaderboard. Um, the media companies that we um, are, are in negotiations with, this is a, a must on the list of what we need them to do. Um, they'll be updated as far as on the boat, pushed in there and everything. But here's here's one thing as far as that leaderboard goes. You know, and I love Bass, and they did a great job. And when Ot Defoe won the Classic down in Knoxville, yeah, one of the things that was a little bit disappointing – Great coverage, great event. You stood in the arena for four hours, three hours, and you knew who won. Mm -hmm. You knew who won. There was no setup for the hot seat, the drama. Did he do it? Is it an ounce? Is it by a pound? Did he only have four fish, five fish? You know, when it comes to Saturday, and, you know, we launch out there at safe light or 7 a.m., and first flight is due in at at 3 o'clock, and... um, these gentlemen or ladies, you never know. You never know might qualify a lady for this circuit because there's a lot of good lady sticks out there. We want to cut off that uh, live coverage on the water early enough to where there's suspense. People that are at that weigh-in, man, I don't know if you know, uh, you know, John Smith did it, or I don't know if uh, you know Pete did it. Uh, did, you know, I don't know. We want people to stay there till the end. We want that individual angler that's on the hot seat. Yeah, I got some updates, but it's sweat. quit at noon. Well, what's going on? It's a hot seat for a reason. Heck, you see those guys over there, they might as well sit in an air condition. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but no, we're going to do that. We're going to work out the logistics because, like I said, everything comes down to the optics. We want people to tune in on that weigh-in from the very first boat truck that pulls up to the very last one. If they already know who the winner is based on on-water coverage, you lose that return on investment and exposure for the anglers and the sponsors because then you lose a ton of clicks and visual and comments on that. Okay, I've had a bunch of people asking questions, so I'm going to ask a couple questions that people have been doing here. Uh, Mark Tomlinson wrote, would you consider having a wild card slot for an average drove fisherman to join the league? Wow, it's a neat idea. Different. Different. I will tell you this. Last night after we got done uh, with Ike Live, uh, Brad, Michelle, and Paul and I were doing work on our laptops. Brad is overseas. For people who don't, uh, don't know, Brad is a st- uh, still works for the U.S. government. He's a uh, Air Force veteran, and he still does contract work. He'll be over in Afghanistan for the next four months. So to all those uh, individuals out there that are in the service or – Police, fire, and EMTs, we appreciate everything they do. Mm -hmm. But that's a great point, a wild card. Absolutely. This thing is about a platform for guys that are on the outside in or on the outside looking in. That wild card is a great idea. That's something that, you know, I'm going to put down on the list and we'll talk about to where how do we decide that? You know, it could be something to where we look at uh, these average Joe guys and we say, okay, guys, um, you guys are all located here. Here's a central lake. Uh, We're going to put on an event. You 50 show up, last man standing, you're in. Nice. We might go to Chickamauga, southeast guys from Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, all that stuff. You 50 guys show up, last man standing, you're in. There's a lot of things that we're going to do to kind of, you know, like I said, we'll we'll fill the field, but we want kind of that unknown. We want that NASCAR young guns when – Smoke and Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. came with the Gillette boys and young. We want those college guys, those young people. We want those unknowns to come in and we want to market them. And that's a great idea there as far as a wild card to get into the field. So Hank Snow says, since everyone will be signing a contract to fish the trail, will there will there be an opportunity for other fishermen to join at, uh, to join the trail, to, to fish and join the trail? Yeah, so here's uh, here's what's going to happen. We think the way that we set it up um, as far as a two-year contract with option of a third. And, and the reason we give an option for a third is, look, things change in life. People mm-hmm. move. They have children. They've got to focus on this and that. We don't want to box in anybody for longer than three years. We think two years is is is, is fair because we're giving them an opportunity. They don't have to requalify. They can go to their sponsors and sell two years, if not three years. Um 
But eventually what we're going to do is we will grow this thing into where we will have a, uh, a qualifying circuit. Because after the third year, that fourth, fifth, and beyond, it's going to be 25 out, 25 in. Well, where do we get that? Yeah. We either go to the Costa side, the uh, uh, BFL side. We go to uh, see the uh, Anglers in Action guys uh, that might want to do it. We look at their resumes. Or do we start a small little local regional uh, feeder qualification process where we say, hey, we're going to have a uh, two-day tournament at Lake of the Ozarks. 50 guys, 100 guys, whoever show up, you know, the last two standing – our last three, boom, they get us. They get two, three spots. We'll go to, um, you know, Okeechobee or Lanier or Harris Chain. Let's do the same thing. Last three standing, boom, you guys are in. We'll go out to meet or have a suit. Qualifying two-day tournament, last three standing, boom, you're in. And go from there. I, There's I a saw, lot of things we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw an interview on uh, The Real Shot. Uh, and yeah. I should give them a shout out. They did the first interview with y'all. They must have, I think they had Paul with them or no, they had Brad with them. They had Brad Fuller with Omega custom tackle. Yes. Great interview. Uh, first time I've seen them and I just needed to say they did a great job and, and thank you for them doing what they did because it, it was cool. Okay. Another, another question was, will there be cutoffs as each days go by? Jason Beck okay. asked that question. So for the first three years, all the anglers will fish all three days. Uh, and, and then when we get into years four and five, then we will have a championship day cut down to, you know, the top 25 or the top 50. We're still trying to figure that out because our ultimate goal by year three or four is to pay one and two boats. So if we have a field of 125 and we're paying 63, that championship cut could be down to 63, whatever it might be top 25, we're still working on the logistics of that. But the reason that we're having these guys in the first three years fish all three days, I love the Cinderella story. I love a guy that might be two pounds, four ounces, uh, maybe 10 pounds in 50th place or 40th place or maybe 60th place, and all of a sudden they bang a bag down at Grand Lake like Edwin Evers did of 30 pounds and just fly by the field and bam, they're raising that check up for $50,000. So there's a lot of times where guys, you know, if we cut down to 25 and they're in 26 at two ounces, goodness gracious, you know, that's a, that's a little drink of water out in the desert that really tastes good because it's only two drops. But we want to have that Cinderella story. Yeah. We want to be able to market that. And look, going into it for you media guys, just think of the stories that you could write. Coming into Saturday, say the two-day total is 30 pounds, okay? Two 15 days or a 16-14. And then 60th place is at 22 pounds or at 20 pounds. Man, there's a lot that can go on. Those guys are all on the Weather Channel. They're checking out, man, is it going to wind blow this way? Is the rain coming in? Is it going to get cold? Do I have to fish deep and I, can I throw up the docks? But to have all those guys out there, plus on top of that, if we have an event at Rayburn, say, and a, and a guy's coming from Wisconsin or coming from, from Florida, to ask him to fish two days and go home is not fair investment-wise, yeah. okay? Now, they're going to team up as far as lodging goes with the hotels and all that kind of stuff. But really, how many times have you seen guys that they go to a tournament, they fish two days, they 17-pounded on day one. They 11-pounded on day two. They just missed the cut. And then they say, you know what? I don't have to be home till Sunday. I'm going to go out and fun fish. And they crash 25 on day three. And then they go to the, the leaderboard at the end. They go, holy cow, I would have been in fourth place. This yeah. sucks. We're I mean, not going to do that. Just last week or two weeks ago, we had Terry Scroggins out here on the Harris chain. Five pounds over 39. Five fish, 39. On Good frogs. Run. Unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. I mean, he annihilated everyone. You um, know, these top waters, as far as frogs, you're seeing more of the rats, and now I'm seeing more of the ducklings. Oh, yeah. I mean, pretty – basically what we're going to see probably in the next five years is we're going to see anglers that have shoulders bigger than NFL players. Because they're <laughs> – They got to – They got to throw those big ones. You got me? Okay. 
Have you? Yeah, I got you. Yep. Uh, have you guys had it? Because last year, one of the things Bass did, uh, there was some reaction stuff that Bass had to do after Major League Fishing. But one of the things they did was they did not really a signing bonus, but they gave the, the anglers, a, some of the big name guys, a credit towards fishing in their in their tournament in their in their in, in the elites has there been any thought about doing that to some of the bigger name guys that might possibly be moving that aren't happy with what uh, aren't happy with FLW right now don't want to fish major league fishing or won't qualify for major league fishing and they didn't fish the open so they can't move into the elites have you given any thought to maybe giving a credit to a giant name guy to get him in, get him into the national professional fishing league. You know, that's not in the cards right now. Not okay. that it won't be something in the future. Look, uh, we're low man on the totem pole. We're green. Um, you know, there could be some sponsor exemptions as far as what the sponsor investment is, is, but, but we really need those entry fees. And then the other thing about it too is Look, we want everybody, all 125 are going to be treated the same. They all got to pay to play, okay? Yeah. Um, now, like I said, if somebody, as far as the sponsorship goes, and, and they, they bring in somebody for $100,000, we can take that 30000 and put it back into that pool because we need that money for the half-million-dollar payout per event. Um, look, we when we started this thing, whether it's – uh, you know, they always say the last guy to, to graduate in med school is still a doctor. You know, whether he's one or 250, he's still a doctor. He's still going to tell you, Steve, hey, you got laryngitis. You're okay? We, we, don't, we don't want we, – we, look, we understand the exposure big names can bring. You yeah. know, any you take the top 20 guys in all of the different uh, trails out there, yeah, that gives us cachet. But I will tell you this. There's a lot of guys on the outside looking in that got some skills, and they're going to get a following regionally, whether they're an Alabama guy, a Texas guy, a Florida guy, uh, a, um, a Virginia guy, a Wisconsin, a California, Arizona guy. We'll build that up there. But as far as giving a, an exemption, come on and fish, no, uh, no uh, entry fee because of who you are, that's not in the cards right now. So here's here's the really tough question. We know FLW lost millions upon millions of dollars every year doing doing their tournament. How do you guys not fall into that category and just lose your asses? No offense. That you I'm you, never offended. Never. I mean either am I usually. But how do you <laughs> do you, do you think you have the group of people? I know you have a, the the partners that you have right now are a great group of individuals. But do you have do you think you have all of it put together so that you don't fall behind FL and do what FLW did. Yeah. Look, we would not have put out the press release on Monday. If financially, you know, th this is an investment from all four of us out of mm -hmm. our own pockets. Um, and then we've got to go out and get the sponsors. Like I said, we've got a 16 month process to get this all done before, you know, we put that first boat in the water, but look, um, even a big corporation like an FLW, you still have to mind your P's and Q's. Uh, and I'm not saying that they did anything bad there or all that stuff, but, you know, you, you just really have to be cognizant of what's going on as far as your spend goes, uh, where you're putting your money at. Um, our biggest investment, like I said, is going to be in the optics of this thing. That's from trailer stage to live streaming. We understand that cost there. But, look, we can't go out on the road and, hey, let's go stay at the uh, Waldorf. Hey, yeah. let's go stay. Let's go stay at, uh, you know, the, hey, we've got to be cognizant of this because for us, you know, we're looking at 20, 25, 30, 40, 50 years. This is day one Bass in March or day one FLW with the National Professional Fishing League. We want to give an opportunity for these guys that have maybe qualified but haven't gotten the invite to fish on a level that finally they've, they, they strive for, they've worked for and everything. It's a heavy investment, but it's big time money. And then there's maybe there's the opportunity to where this is the stepping stone that they needed. I'm not going to begrudge an angler if he says, Hey, Brad, Michelle, Al, Paul, you know, love what you guys are doing. It's great. But God, since I was 13, I've always wanted to go fish for bass. They've asked me to come based on what I've done on your trail. I'm going to shake that individual's hand and say, go get a cup, go get a classic, whatever it might be. Um, we'd love them to stay with us, but this is an opportunity there. But 
you got to mind your P's and Q's when it comes to finances and what you're doing. Uh, and we're going to do that. And, and we wouldn't have put the press release out there if we weren't financially stable as far as where we're investing our dollars and what our budget is. End of story. Yeah. That's that's good to hear. Hank asked another question. He said, as sponsorships, let me put it on here, as sponsorships for the league increase, will you lower the entry fees for the anglers? So there's two things that are going to happen here. Here's my ultimate goal as sponsor dollars come on. One and two boats. I want to pay half the field, okay? Mm -hmm. I want half the field to get paid. And that guy at 62 or 63, I want that person to make $9,000, $10,000, okay? That way, at the high end of their expenses, seven grand for an event entry fee, lodging, fuel, all that stuff, they're making two thousand, three thousand. They're in the black. I don't want a guy to come there. He goes, "Hey, man, look, I cashed a check, but I lost three grand." Well, what the hell? I mean, that, that's no good there. The other thing is, here's my ultimate goal, and this is the five-year plan. But I want to get there sooner rather than later. When sponsorship dollars come on, the first thing I want to do is I want to take all six events from first place at a. Uh, 50,000 to 100 grand. That was nice. my initial payout that I wanted. I wanted to compete with the big boys out there. I wanted that 100,000 six figures up there for that angler. So as far as sponsorship dollars coming in, we're going to put the majority of that money back into two things. Um, it's either a trade-off between entry fees or adding it to the pot as far as winnings mm -hmm. and into our optics as far as live streaming goes. We want to take it to the next level and the next level and the next level. We're all about, I would love to get, you know, the perfect equation if the numbers add up. $2,500 a tournament and you're fishing for uh, $550,000 or $600,000. But you need sponsorship dollars to do that. If you don't have it, you can't do it. You're, you're out kicking your coverage on that. But to answer the question, absolutely, you know, I want in year five, that championship check could be worth half a million dollars, and I want to pay the angler of the year $100,000. So this is where that those investments will go back in there. I think in the long run, sponsors see that. They're going to just come. We're going to have to go work for them, but a lot of them will come knocking on our door. Yeah. It seems like you've got this whole thing a lot better. I, I, I know you have it planned, <laughs> but it seems like you guys have this a lot. It, a lot you have it tightened up. More than I think, uh, more than I think that I thought you could at this rate. To be honest, uh, sure. Because I know last year I major league fishing came down here to Kissimmee, and I I thoroughly expected it to be just a complete s show, just everything going wrong, and it didn't. And it sounds like you guys have the same are on that same path that major league fishing is doing, and that's wonderful to hear um, because you know. You're going to have your haters and everything that, that we do. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's all right. Look, you know what? One of the greatest things is trying to convince them. You know, if we had everybody there chopping and patting us on the back and all that stuff, you know, we're not in this thing as far as egos go. Look, I'm going to be down at events. I'm going to talk to anybody, you know, Brad, Michelle, Paul, all of our crew and all that stuff. This is about bringing an event, number one, to a fishery or a town or a community to help them as far as their economic impact when maybe they're not during their recreation time, mm -hmm. uh, their summertime. So it's another opportunity to bring tax dollars, fill up those hotels, fill up those small mom and pop bed and breakfast, whatever it might be. Um, but for us, look, you don't just jump into this thing without having, look, I got so many spreadsheets, Steve. I, <laughs> I, 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 I got a bone to pick with Excel. If you find Mr. Excel, <laughs> let me know because I'm going to whoop him. I'm going to whoop him big time. <laughs> Well, when I but, texted you the other day, you, was, you were like, I'm slammed. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. He's really <laughs> yeah. busy. That's Look, all you wrote. I, actually, you wrote something else. Well, I mean, well, actually, honestly, that wasn't a metaphor. Actually, I got body slammed by Hulk Hogan. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Yeah. Uh, but, no, we worked out the logistics. Look, my biggest butterflies in my stomach, hey, Al, you're going and putting on a fishing event, and you got to pay $500,000, and plus you're going to have expenses. Who? Man, you know what? Why don't you just take that whole notebook right there, go over to the trash can and throw the damn thing away. Just but I'm over. like, you know what? Thank, like I said, the Terrell family, my dad started it with me, with the family and fishing. The Terrell family took it to the next level, how they run their investment into their trail, Midwest region. There's no competition between 
tournament trail and what I'm trying to do as far as a professional fishing league goes. But this is what I like to do. If you talk to anybody associated with the Big Bass Bash or Anglers in Action, I try to make the event um, a little bit more exciting for them. Um, and hopefully that that does something to where they want to fish our trail, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm all about this. We're going to work hard to do it. It'll be a lot of uh, arguments, blood, sweat, tears, and all that stuff. But it's going to be fun. And it's going to give a lot of people options from the anglers to the fans and the sponsors. Yeah. Okay, last question. I'll let you go. Mark yep. wrote, uh, will the tournaments be spread out across the United States in a major uh, in a major to give everyone a chance to attend an NPFL event? So yes. You're gonna, so you're going to have two two in the spring, two in the summer, two in the fall. Are you going to go – are you going to – well, here, let me expound on Mark's question. Are you going to try to go to big fish – big pl- places where there's big fish and it's pre-spawn, or are you going to go to – just places where there's great fishing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So great question. Um, so here's the, here's the logistics of the schedule. I will tell you this. We will, we will have our schedule out um, as far as in writing. These are going to be the dates probably by mid next year because we've got to look at some other schedules and all that stuff. Like I said, the number one thing for me is I don't want to deny guys bass opens, whether it's the East, Eastern or Central Division. I mean, it's just not fair. Yeah. You just don't yeah. give take away that opportunity. People that fish our circuit, look, it's not a derby or a jackpot. You're going to have to fish all six events. You qualify, you're going to the championship. So we want a little bit loyalty there. As far as the fisheries goes, look, we got 125 anglers. We can get, we can get on a lot of great small lakes uh, that guys are not going to. We're also going to go to the big boys, uh, you know, the Lake O's, the Chickamauguas, the Lake of the Ozarks, uh, the Rayburns, the Toledo Bends, mm-hmm. the Meads, the Havasus, the Clear Lakes. We're going all out there. I really think, you know, the to to not go out west and to have your name the National Professional Fishing League is a contradiction. And mm-hmm. I really think the market out there is is waiting for it's untapped. Uh, you know, a pro circuit to come out there. So I've talked to guys uh, out west. Uh, from Washington to Oregon to Arizona to uh, California, we're going to come out there. Now, what I will tell you, and this is where we get back to the working man aspect of it. People are always boxed in. Working man's trail and it's 30,000 bupkis. Well, okay, I understand that point. Go ahead, write it out there on something. When I say working man, guys have families, guys have a business, or they have a job. I'm not going to send them in the same year to from Lake Okeechobee uh, in the uh, spring, and then in the summer to Clear Lake. Yeah. I'm not going to do that, okay? When I say working man, by my definition, I should have been a little bit clearer. That's no big deal. But every other year we'll go out west, and we'll do two events. We'll do a clear, and we'll do a uh, a meet or a Havasu or a Shaft, whatever it might be. But we'll do those two events to where guys can – go fish mead and then four weeks later they got to come out to clear lake so they can you know park their boat their trailer or whatever out there and they don't have to run back and forth but i'm not going to go to champlain to okeechobee to toledo bend or rayburn and then out to clear lake in one year that's what i talk about that way guys number one the schedule spread out and then number two we still want them to run those billboards those trucks and boats down the road because that's good return on investment for their sponsors but we don't want them running. Um, I mean, hell, do I want to put an event in Australia, put it on a tugboat, and let's go? No. We don't want them to run that far. That's ridiculous. They've got jobs. They've got families. They've got kids to raise. they got ball games to see. You know, they've got to punch a clock. We understand it. That's what I'm talking about working, man. Scheduling around what's best for that angler, family, and job. Dude, I, uh, I got to say, I, I, I wish we wish you the best of luck. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to put some of this on our radio show on Saturday morning that's broadcast throughout Florida. I'm going to have to cut it apart a little bit, but I'm going to put a bunch of this on here. This will go on our YouTube channel here once I hit finish, but uh, let's keep in touch. And if there's something Absolutely. that we can do to help promote, if you're coming down here to Florida, you tell me and we'll get it out there for you. That's the best way you know, to say it. Uh, most people say I need to cut and edit. Uh, Randy Terrell, the director of Anglers in Action, the Big Bass Bash and founder, he calls me the mouth for a reason. So you definitely need to cut and edit because I talk too much. 
that, that I you it, you did great, and we really appreciate it. You uh, you also have a business that we should plug. It's Elite Angler. It's A N A N G L R. Correct. Uh, and you have a whole bunch of apparel, hats, shirts, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you have worldwide. James Watson is one of your your guys. I know that. Yep. But uh, you can go on there if people want to apply to be on the National Professional Fishing League. What email address should they send the application to? Okay, they need to send it to Al at Elite Angler. That's E L I T E A N G L R dot com. They can send uh, the application also to Paul at Cash and Rods dot com. And by the way, we should give a shout out to. I'm not. I don't have a cash and rod, but they have my boy Best. Fat Cat New, Fat Cat Newton's on that team. I think, and Skinny? I love. Oh yeah, Skinny's on the team. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Fat Cat my right now. I kick. Um, uh, and I love that they they sponsor uh, Fat Cat because he's the best. So, yeah, Steve. I just put a post last night on the face on our Facebook page, the National Professional Fishing League. It talks about anglers and sponsors and how to get in contact with us. It's very quick, easy read. The emails are there. Send that to us. We'll file it in the correct folder, and, and we're going to go to work. You have a website. Is it nationalprofessionalfishingleague.com? So the website will be up and running this weekend. Okay. We're working through a few things there. Uh, we got a great group that's working on that. But everything that we do, go to our Facebook page or Instagram but all of that information will be disseminated on the, our Facebook page. And like I said, I put that up there as far as sponsors and anglers, how to get in touch with us and send your resumes or your product information. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Good luck Thank you. again. Let's keep in touch. We appreciate your time today. Everyone go check out the National Professional Fishing League on Facebook and their website will be up there soon. But Al, thank you again. And I'm going to hit finish and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, Steve. Appreciate it. Later, guys. Okay, remember to subscribe, be part of the Fish and Florida Radio family, and we'll talk to you all soon.